Hey guys and gals, this is Alden for the Mosin Crate. First things first, I can't answer any sales related questions here on YouTube. They will delete the video. That includes things like how much, where do I buy one, how do I buy one, anything related to sales at all, they're going to delete it. But if you go on rumble.com and search my username on there, the Mosin Crate, without any spaces, you'll find this same video where I can and do answer those questions. So I highly encourage you to go check that video out now. I did have to mute a lot of the sound because unfortunately, as you can maybe tell, it's an extremely windy day and you could just hear nothing but wind uh, from the microphone. So getting right into it, we have nearly 100 German K98K rifles from World War II. And you may notice that beautiful Portuguese crest on top of the receiver and that is because these are part of the Portuguese contract. So there were, I believe, two contracts by the Portuguese with the Germans for these. And these were all made at Mauser Oberndorf. And the second contract, the 1941 contract, which is what all of these are, are identical to the German issue K98K, other than the Portuguese crest on the receiver. And you can see they've got plenty of Waffen amps. There's even a here marking there on the stock. A lot of them have that H marking. Here stands for Army. And these things are just covered in German proof marks. The nice thing about these is most of them are mostly matching. There's none in there that are completely matching. Usually it's going to be something like the stock is going to mismatch or maybe a barrel band or something like that. There's none that are completely matching, but they are mostly matching. to say these are all in good surplus condition like I said got close to 100 we're going to go through and kind of show you the differences in them some of them have really nice bluing uh, most of them are going to have a sight hood cleaning rod most will have a sling not all of them but most will come with all three and you may notice the bluing on this one here and I think the bluing is missing on near the, the barrel and the barrel bands there just because that's where a lot of soldiers probably held it on parade duty or guard duty over the years and that's just where you see a lot of bluing uh, missing. They made 60,000 of these in the uh, 1941 contract but only delivered 50,000 because the other 10,000 they used uh, and sometimes you'll find them uh, in Russian captures or even Norwegian crap capture guns or even bringbacks from World War II uh, sometimes they will be one of those 10,000 that didn't get sent to Portugal this one you can see I believe maybe the Portuguese applied almost looks like lacquer or something like that Really nice sling on this one. And you'll notice the screws on these usually are something that won't match. That's one of the few things that won't. 
uh, be matching on them. But again, don't expect an all matching rifle. Usually, like I said, it's a barrel band or maybe the rear sight doesn't match. I've seen more than a few of them that the stock doesn't match. In fact, the majority of them, that's usually the one thing that doesn't match. I'm not sure why that is. Uh, this one's probably a worst case scenario on bluing. As you can see, it's probably closer to a solid, maybe a good shooter grade, I would say, but still it's a nice looking rifle. Beautiful crest on top of the receiver. And then I also had a brown 15 or 16 that had their original matching bayonets. Now the bayonets are nothing to write home about. They're probably fair to good condition somewhere in there. They are well used as you can see. Got a lot of tiger striping in this one here. And this is about an average bayonet. You can see there's some rust on there, some light surface rust. The grip's in okay shape. It's got a fairly blunt tip on it, but it's in decent shape. And then I have a bunch that I set to side, set to the side. And these are, by the way, there's the import marking. Very small. So you can see it's small and out of the way. And I set these to the side because they have lower serial numbers, like they'll have a two or three digit serial number or they'll have a really pretty tiger stripe sock, something like that. I've got 26 of these set to the side, I think, in all. By the way, these are all in 8mm for the correction Nazis out there. They are in 792. See that uh, three digit, 484, 402. You'll notice some of them will have this suffix added. Unfortunately, that has to be done per ATF standards. Basically, if a serial number is already in the system that's been used on another rifle, doesn't necessarily have to be a K98K. It could be like a, a French Moss 36 or something like that. They have to add a suffix to create a whole new serial number. So if you see that, that is not an original part of the serial number. Some of them have it, some of them don't, as you can notice.
there's some surface rust on this one. I think that's something that maybe some bronze wool and some croil would take out pretty easily. There are some that will have a bit of surface rust. It's usually going to be on the barrel bands and the muzzle end of the barrel. I haven't seen many like that, but there are a few in there. And these things are pretty expensive. You know, they imported Portuguese Mausers, I guess, back in the 90s, 80s and 90s. And uh, they just, we haven't seen any of the Portuguese contract K98 rifles in a long time. Uh, and they've gotten up there in price. So, you know, if you're just wanting a cool G44, that's a low serial number. If you're just wanting a really cool World War II Mauser, that's a bit cheaper, I would go get a Russian capture or maybe even a Balkans capture rifle or something like that. They'll be a little bit cheaper uh, and those have really cool history too. Uh, these are a bit more of collector's items just because you don't really see them imported. I haven't seen them imported uh, ever. Uh, I've, the last time these things were, was imported was back when I was a child. So it's that tells you how often the Portuguese contract come in in any number. And these last two rifles, these are kind of interesting because they are, most everything on them is matching. Um, I think this bottom one is completely matching. One of them is completely matching other than the uh, screws in the uh, trigger guard. And the other one I think is mostly matching. And I'm not sure because it does, the finish looks like, I don't even know if that's bluing or what that is. Um, and the stock is kind of... It doesn't have any Waffen amps on the stock that I've noticed, but it does have a really deep, nice serial number on there. So I don't know if this is something the Portuguese did um, or later owners did, or I'm not sure. Um, but they're in really nice shape. And I've only got two of them like this. You can see that serial number there in the bottom of the stock. I mean, really, really deep stampings, but no other markings on the stock that I can see. Try to show you the. That's another thing about these guys. There's going to be a lot of grease on some of them. Just expect that. You see that uh, screw there doesn't match, and the back one doesn't match either. This one, it may be a replacement safety because it doesn't look like it has a serial number unless they stamped it by mistake on the bottom, which I honestly did not check. See some of the finishes worn away there on the receiver. And that's going to do it for this video, guys. So like I said, about 100, just under 100 World War II German-made Mausers. Really cool. Really neat to see this many. Uh, I wish I could be more enthusiastic, but honestly, I need to go get some more coffee because I have a lot more work to do. Uh, again, go, go check this on Rumble. If you guys are into these, go watch this video on Rumble. It's going to be well worth your time. Thanks for watching. Click that subscribe button. I'll have a really cool surplus coming up here in the future.